All right, so for our first uh, day of the class, we're going to talk in general concepts of blogging. I'll show you examples, and we're going to get hands-on in a brainstorming session of writing. So if you would like to uh, open your web browser, we've got all the popular ones down here. So open any web browser you'd like. Let's go to the address WordPress. Dot org, dot org. So WordPress.org, this is the software we're going to use to write our blogs. We can use any software, of course, uh, but WordPress is one of the big ones. It's got about 25% market share meaning 25% of the websites of the world, depending if they're a blog or a regular website, they use WordPress. I'm going to write some notes here. WordPress.org. Uh, the software to create a basic or advanced website. To write blogs, to engage in e-commerce. It's what you use to make websites. Yes? Do you need to have a website through WordPress to use the blog for your website? When you say through WordPress, do you mean the software or on the Word WordPress website? Like, I have a website through ABMP. Oh, okay. Insurance. That's a question then about a service provider. Um, no, you can have any service provider uh, to to use the blogging. Now, it's sometimes it depends on your service provider if it can use the WordPress software. Not everyone can, so maybe during the break we can look at your particular setup and see if it'll work or not. But most modern providers will let you use WordPress because it's so popular. They have something in there, but I didn't really understand it. Sometimes a provider has its own blog system, oh. and that's what you'll use, and it's just its version. And as long as you can do the things that we're talking about in this class, it's a perfectly fine solution. Cool. So WordPress.org uh, is, that's where we get the software. We can create websites. Um, we're seeing here at at the site it says download WordPress so we're easily able to download it and use it on, uh, on our site. This WordPress.org is basically the the manual, the spot where you go to to learn about what WordPress is. So the site has the software and the manual and a help system you're going to see at the top there's support. Here's the documentation, the whole manual for WordPress, everything, how it works. And forums, where you can ask a question and people will help you for free if you've got a problem on your website. Now, because it's free, you might not get an answer right away. Uh, but uh, it's a very good system to get help from, from people that know WordPress. You can also go here and get cool t-shirts. You can also see who else uses WordPress. The New York Times uses WordPress. Motley Crue uses WordPress. So interesting range there of WordPress users. So it's about 25% market share of all the websites. 25% global market share. They use WordPress. There are many ways to make a website. There are many ways to blog. This is one of them. WordPress dot org. <coughs> so the alternative to WordPress.org is WordPress.com. Let's take a quick look at that. We have WordPress.org. We have WordPress.com. People often ask right away, well, what's the difference? I, I've heard of the two. I would have gone to WordPress.com directly. Why is there also WordPress.org? 
Well, WordPress.com is what we will be using in this class. I'll explain why soon, but WordPress.com is where I can go here directly and quickly create a website. I can go here and create a website right now for free that is WordPress. Over at WordPress.org, I don't create one directly here. I have to download the software myself, install the software, and set it up. So I don't create an actual website at .org. I create a website at .com. WordPress.com create a website right away with WordPress. So the one on top is more like learn about WordPress, learn how to set it up. You don't actually create a website at .org. You can do it at .com. The third way is your service provider. For example, GoDaddy.com, Bluehost.com, HostMonster.com, OneAndOne.com, etc., etc., etc. These providers. Uh, this is another way for you to use WordPress. So we have a bunch of different options which can be a little confusing. The reason that it can be confusing is because they have different purposes. So let me break it down this way. I'm going to say wordpress.org versus well, let me do it here. wordpress.com versus wordpress.org. wordpress.com is free mostly. WordPress.org is free. WordPress.com, create a website. WordPress.org, download the software. Yes? Do you share this with us? Yeah, like I said earlier, when I save this, I'm going to save it at the, uh, at the end of the day when I've written it all. You can also email me if you have to leave early before I before I share it with people. Email me, and then I can send it to you. Okay, thank you. So um, the big the big difference also in WordPress.com. If you create a website at WordPress.com, most likely you're going to get something like Victor's Blog. WordPress.com. If you go via WordPress.org, you're going to get Victor's Blog. Dot com. You're going to get a name over here that doesn't have someone else's branding. Actually, you can at dot com get simply victorsblog.com if you pay. The free version at dot com will give you their branding on the address. <coughs> With dot org, you have your own name on it. Now, both of these, I have to put an asterisk. You know, the asterisk is like a little caveat. The WordPress.com, the part about it being free is that if you use, if you use their branded site, that's why it's free. WordPress.org is free software only. You still have to pay a provider. That was the third, man, the third item that I mentioned here. You have to go to Bluehost.com, GoDaddy, HostMonster, one and one infinite number of providers. You have to go to one of those and look at how much it costs and get the service and all that. And we'll talk about that later. But uh, here, simply, this is the non-free version. And this is just the way it is. If you want a real website that anyone can access in the world with the full control and power, you have to pay for it. The software itself is still free, but you have to install it. You have to install it somewhere and pay for that. 
WordPress.com is very useful and powerful, but it has limitations. We will see what they are later. WordPress.org, no limitations. <coughs> One limitation that I can say with .com is no plugins. Over at .org, all plugins. You get all the plugins. A plugin is basically a little app that gives you more features. Out of the box, WordPress is very powerful. It has a lot of features. But for example, if I want to sell products on my website, that's not built into WordPress. That's a plugin. And I just said over here that at .com, you don't get plugins. So if you want to add shopping cart to your website, that's going to be a plugin. If you want to add, for example, chat features, have you been to a website that a little window appears and it says, hi, do you have a question? Let's chat. You can do that on WordPress.org. You can't do that on .com because that's a plugin and no plugins on WordPress.com. So we're seeing these big differences. For this class, we're going to use .com because we can start a blog pretty quickly. Whereas with .org, we would have to go through a whole process of going through the provider and paying for it. And I'm not going to ask you to pay for anything. We're going to see it's not that expensive, but for the purposes of the class, I won't ask you to buy anything. So we're going to use the .com. And the cool thing is that if you create a blog on .com, you can transfer it over to .org. It can be exported out of .com over to your GoDaddy or your Bluehost or whatever. One more thing about .com, they take care of the details, and on .org, you take care of the details. What that means is, did you make a backup of your site? Did you save your picture properly? Did you update the software? All of those details. .com takes care of it for you. It makes backups of your site. It manages your content. It keeps you up to date in the software so that you don't get viruses and all of that. On the .org, it's all up to you. You have to take care of updating the software, you have to take care of, you know, antivirus, all of that stuff. So there's a lot of pros and cons, but I always recommend the .org. It's a pretty an advanced recommendation, however, because you're going to have to deal with all of these features yourself. And for this class, again, we're going to use .com because this is the fastest way for us to get started. We can export .com later if we'd like. Yes? But if I want to take the other class, I can learn how to do that. Yes. If you take my other WordPress class, it's going to be focusing on the .org. Yes? Are you, because Emily, I, I didn't know how, who Emily is, right? Emily K? Yeah. Yes. Actually, she says she has also WordPress before. Mm -hmm. Do you guys teach the same courses or different ones? No, different instructors teach different topics, although there's probably some overlap. Oh. We, don't co we don't quite coordinate, but uh, if you have but the time, I would recommend to take more than one. But you're teaching different WordPress? No, WordPress is WordPress. Most likely she's also teaching with .org, the full powered one. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't touched base with her. Uh -huh. Most likely she's doing the .org as well. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do then is the first thing is we are going to create uh, the WordPress.com site so that we have something to work with. Uh, we're then going to uh, look at examples of blogging and such. But the first thing I want to do is have us create a site here so that we can so that we can work. Uh, whatever you're doing, go over to WordPress.com if you're not there already. And it's going to tell you about uh, create an unforgettable website or whatever. It's going to tell you why it's so good etc. You can read about all the things about WordPress and then at some point you may see about pricing. Again, we're going to do the completely free version of WordPress and so we have business, we have premium, we have free, 
$24.92 a month. If you do the math, that's more than $250 a month, I mean a year for business. You get all of these features, but that's still very expensive. That's $250, $300. You can get much more service over at Bluehost for the same amount of price. So we will just use the completely free version. You should see at the top. Let's click Create Website. I've got a few steps that I need to fill in here. Mine says one of six. Um, what's your site about? You have all of these possibilities. Hopefully one of them makes sense. Uh, let's say I have, um, I want to be a food blogger. I'm going to write about restaurant reviews and maybe like my own recipes. Um, what would apply for mine would be probably then uh, maybe writing, maybe lifestyle, maybe I'm trying to make money off of my blog, business. You see the concepts are kind of general enough that anyone could probably apply. <coughs> I'm going to select writing. And then it might give you some more details. Well, what kind of writing are you doing? Probably I will choose here um, author site. This is my website. I'm the author. This is my website. I'm going to be writing everything here. So I'll do author site. We will see that WordPress has templates. I'll make a note here. WordPress, either .com, .org uses templates. Now I, have, I hate to stop the class to say this, but I ask uh, no food and beverages in the classroom. That's kind of very distracting at the moment. If you could maybe wait during the break to partake. So we've got templates, uh, the ability to, uh, which let you change your design very easily. That's what this screen is asking here. What, what sort of design, visually, how would you like it to look? It's a template. It lets you change your design very easily. Because I can have a certain design, I can have a certain template set up, and then I get tired of it a few weeks later, a few months later, and I can change it pretty easily to a new design, and all my content transfers over pretty, pretty easily. So here I'm getting, you know, what kind of general design do you want? I'm just going to go with... Uh, a list of my latest posts. I'm going to be writing articles. This can be changed, of course, later. But I'm going to be writing articles. I'm going to be writing posts. I want them to be visible pretty, pretty easily. I can do it in a grid format, different ways. Because then you have these different ways to display your content. You don't have you know, a thousand different designs. That's over at WordPress.org. At .com, you've got a few hundred designs, depending on what screen you're looking at. Again, another vote for why uh, WordPress.org is so valuable. It just gives you much more, many more features. Whichever of these designs that you see that you like, you can just click on and we'll, we'll use it. Uh, if you don't see the same ones that I'm looking at, you can pick any one. But I'm going to select a uh, button. Next it's saying, okay, choose your domain, choose your address. What, what address are you going to have for your, for your site? And this says you have the option of something.wordpress.com, which is free, or something.com. That one is not free. 
So let's say uh, enter a domain or keyword. Let's say I'm going to do a name like um, Victor Food Writer. It says victorfoodwriter.wordpress.com is free, it's available. I could do victorfoodwriter.com. It'll tell me I have to pay for that. victorfoodwriter.org, .net, etc. I have these different ones, they're all available, but they're not free. I'm going to go with the most free one, which is victorfoodwriter.wordpress.com. Uh, um, if, uh, if I'm trying to choose a name that is already taken, it will tell me, because if someone took the name, it will be taken. And it's suggesting to me here, well, maybe try this one. This one's available. That one that I was trying to do is not, unless I pay for it. So this name will work. I will select it. It's going to give me one last pitch. Do you want the free version? You get these items. Do you want the upgraded version? You get these items. You can do $6 a month with all of this. Again, I don't recommend the WordPress.com paid version. I recommend the WordPress.org. We'll talk about that in more detail later. But for the moment, I want this free version. I'm going to create victorfoodwriter.wordpress.com. I'm going to have the username Victor Food Writer. That can be changed, but I would leave it the same. And then an email address. Now, for the purposes of this class, I'm just going to make this up completely. It's OK. You don't have to use a real address. Um, you can make it up like I will. I'm going to do victor at victorwriter.com. I don't have that address. It's fake. I'm just going to put in some address. Now, be warned here. If you are going to use this blog that we're about to create for real, I would put a real address because it's going to send you an email to confirm that you really want to use it. For the purpose of the class, I'm just making it all up to show you how this all works and what to do and what to write. And then I'm going to delete it or I'm just going to ignore it. It's not real. But if you want this to, to be real, to keep it, you should put a real address. As I said, we will be able to transfer your .org over to a .com uh, if you want to take this with you elsewhere. You put in a password, and then create, click Create My Account. So anyone need any help at this point? Is everyone able to go through this process? You might say, uh, then eventually get started. Click on get started. Mine shows at the address victorfoodwriter.wordpress.com. That's my, that's my address. I can give that address to people now. I can put it on my business card. It's a website. It's, it's real. It's free. It's available for everyone to, use, to see now. It's available for me to start writing and everything. Um, this is why we're using .com. We can quickly get up and running with a website, whereas .org takes much more setup. We're going to use the site. I've got a handout for you. Um, I've got a handout for you that will help us to to write. So let me, I forgot to put it in the folder, but let me let me do this, and then I will give you a file. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, let's do this. If you managed to create the WordPress.com, we're going to start using it pretty, uh, you know, right away. And so I've got, an, I've got a file for you. Minimize your windows and go to the desktop. We're going to go to the network folder. So double click computer window at the top left. And then in the section of network location, you can double click classroom data drive Z as in zebra. Double click classroom data. And then scroll down to find our class, which is campus blogging. Double click that. I put a new file in there. If you came in a little late, the syllabus is right there that I was showing earlier. And I just put in a new file, blogging WordPress checklist. You want to copy those to your USB flash drive or at least to your desktop. I'm going to drag it to my desktop. Don't double click it from the folder. You want to drag it out to your desktop or flash drive. We're going to be looking at this file throughout the, the, the length of the course. Um, it's got a variety of points in a, in a condensed checklist about what you need to think about via planning, writing, all of that. We'll get to it in a moment. When we take our first break in a little bit, you can print it. The printer's off at the moment because it's noisy and distracting, but make sure you got a copy of that checklist. And we'll start looking at it together in just one moment. Before we get into that, I want to show this. Um, as I said previously, the, the thing about me is that I teach these classes, but I'm also part of a company that we do these various things for real clients throughout San Diego. So I'm going to mention a couple of websites that my company is involved in, but I'm going to first show you directly one particular client that really encapsulates everything that is necessary for a successful website. Obviously to toot our own horns, but to show you that it works, because I'm not just talking about these things in theory. These are things that are working for real clients. So if you'd like to check this out, you can go to this website, atestexcoco.com. This is a local restaurant. Um, they hired us a few years ago. This is a, a, re a Mexican food restaurant and this is an example where we do everything that I'm teaching in these classes. We built a website for them in WordPress. WordPress is not just for blogging, it's for a full kind of website. This website has e-commerce. You can buy food off the website using WordPress. This site uses social media. Again, the social media class that's on Wednesday nights. Social media is important to help you get traffic. It's got a blog. It's got a nice design. It's got all of the things that we talk about, that I talk about in all of these classes. We're getting probably close to lunchtime. I apologize. I might make us a little hungry. Uh, but the site has all the things that I'm talking about. Now, the purpose, let me make a note here. This is something we talk more in detail about the SEO class. It's the big question of why. Why do you have a website? There's many other why questions, but one of them to deal with right now. Why do you have a website? Not just because everyone's telling you that you should get one, but why? Are you going to sell products online? Are you going to show off your artwork? Are you trying to build a portfolio online to get hired? As a, uh, as a graphic designer, why do you have a website? This restaurant has a website. The why of their website basically is to have people either order food online or book a table to go to the restaurant. Everything is then in service of that. This restaurant could do fine without any online presence. It could do fine five, ten years ago. But in today's modern world, 
websites and having an online presence is, is the minimal requirements now. It used to be at one point, wow, you have a website. Now it's like, wow, you don't have a website? So that's the minimal now, an online presence, a website. The minimum is a website. Yes? What benchmarks do you use to validate a site is successful? There can be many of them. One for this particular client is sales. We can see that because something was posted on the website, an article was posted, or a tweet was made, and if we can then show at the cash register something was sold more of something than the previous week because of what we posted, that's a measure of success. Not every site is about a direct sales. So other ways to measure success is how many hits. I have an article and I can log into WordPress and it'll tell me your article's got this number of hits this week. This one got 10 more hits than that one. That's a measure of success. Another measure is how many followers do I have on LinkedIn, let's say. If I started off with two followers on LinkedIn and after engaging in all of this SEO stuff, now I've got 20 followers, that's a measure of success. So it's basically up to us, to some degree, to set what are our measures of success. And oftentimes it's monetary based. Not always, but oftentimes. If you're making more money, if you're selling more products, if you're getting more hits, that's a measure of success. And WordPress is helping you to track yes. your reach and your conversion. Exactly. We will see in WordPress we have stats. Right now I'm flatlining, but we will see here that we will have uh, stats about most popular pages and um, time on site and all of that, so it, it helps us. And then we always are free to go off to get more powerful statistics via Google Analytics and such. So many ways for us to track our, our success. So here, y example ps.coco.com y to sell food. The reason for that website is to sell food. If you really want to break it down to the most elemental piece, the purpose of the website is to sell food. So everything being done then should be toward that goal. Visually, it's going there directly. Look at this great taco. Look at this uh, flauta. Look at this. Hopefully you're getting hungry. Order now. You're reading, oh, they've been on the cooking channel. They've been on the travel channel. They must know something that I don't. Let me book a table and check it out. Um, okay, I can get some catering. I can get a quote to get them to cater my event, my private event and such. They've got a rewards program. I like that if I eat there often, I'm going to get rewards and then I'm going to get 10% off a purchase. This restaurant is also at these events. Oh, they're at their Tacotopia event coming up. I never even heard of Tacotopia, a place where I can get lots and lots of tacos. Yes, this is a convention that you can go and get lots and lots of tacos from lots and lots of <laughs> companies throughout. Uh, there's one in San Diego and one in Los Angeles. There's Harbor Fest going on. There's all of these food events. There's all of these photos, as always. Yes? How, ma how, oh, <laughs> no, how many people are managing this one site and all its analytics through WordPress on a team like one person? Because there are so many levels. Components. Um, for this particular client, there are usually two people working on it. It could be done by one person, but it's a lot of work. It could be done by more than two people to manage it all. But for this client, there are usually two people working on it. Yes? Um, the um, news stuff, was that a feed from one area or feeds from different areas? This, this is a widget. This is a widget, which is like a plug-in. It's... Um, there's nuances of the difference, but a, a widget gives these extra features to the site. This particular widget uh, is a manual widget. It's not automatically coming from anywhere. We write the news item and then it shows up here. So we have to do the research to see what events are coming. I don't believe there's like a one-stop location for it to tell you all of these news items for you. We go in and write them and publish them and keep track of them. 
this has a little sign up for offers this has a newsletter feature so it doesn't just say newsletter because nowadays people are very weary of giving away their email I'm gonna get my email sold and I'm gonna get spammed so what I've got here is uh, we wrote it up in a little bit of a nicer way about okay what are you getting in exchange for your email sign up for offers sign up to get things enter your email get things And that's all the social media. If you go look up on Facebook, what's happening on Facebook, if you can read this thing, you're going to see that we're also up to date on all the social media. There's something that was just posted over on on the 3rd. Again, in service, in service always about selling products, in enticing people. Click here. We've got, we're on Harborfest. Um, 8,000 likes, here's a phone number, <coughs> there's our website again. You can't get the taco, you can't download the taco from the website, uh, but from the website you see open every day from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. and then I'm going to order it online or I'm going to go book a, a table. So that's just getting back again to the why. So you have to decide. You have a website or you're going to make a website. Why? Let's say completely different topic. Uh, one of my personal hobbies is I've been educating myself in finance. Um, everyone basically needs to think about retirement at some point, even though for some of us it's decades and decades away in the future that will never come. And for some of us it might be a little closer, but retirement is there for everyone. And I've been educating myself in that. I've been educating myself and I'm happy to give out all of that advice. So I've got a website where I give a little bit of my own personal financial advice. I want people to come and read that. I'm not trying to sell them anything. I'm not trying to tell them, hire me to do your financial planning. I wouldn't dare do that. I'm still learning myself. But I'm giving this advice that has worked for me. So I want traffic to my website to read my articles. That's my why. I'm going to write articles. I simply want people to read them. That's my why of that website. That website is over at bmcinc.net. Now, actually, yes, the number one why of this website is to give away free information. The secondary why is profit a little bit off of it. <laughs> the monetization of things. Ads. I go read investment tips for millennials, and you get a lot of great free advice, but then there's going to be an ad there that might resonate with someone, they might click on it, I might profit a little bit of it. That's a secondary result of this. I like to write about this. I'm not an expert, but I've been learning and I want to put that advice out there. I wish I had learned some of these things a few years ago. I'm happy to pass them on to the next generation. And so there might be an ad. Right there is an ad. I want to know about 401k plans. Someone will click on that. I'll profit a little bit off of that. I can't exactly tell you how much. It depends on a variety of factors. But this is one possible why of a website. Example, mcinc.net, give free advice and commentary. That's my first objective. Second objective, profit a little bit from it. Profit from it basically ads. That's why there's so many ads on websites. You visit a website, you get a pop-up. If someone clicks on it, that company profited. There's an ad on the sidebar. If someone clicks on that, somebody profited. There's an ad on the footer. There's an ad in your email. There's an ad in YouTube. There's an ad everywhere. And that's how people are making money online. So a little bit secondary. Or you could flip it around. You could be at your main goal of your site is to profit from your blog. You'll, you'll have that as a goal. That's fine. So that's the big why. Why do you have a website? Getting back, well, we'll see both in a moment. Getting back to Texcoco. Uh, okay, it's traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. It's a Mexican food restaurant. But it's lamb barbecue. It's barbacoa de borrego. It's traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. 
most likely if you hear the word barbecue or BBQ, you already have an idea of barbecue. You have usually American style barbecue. Do you mean Kansas barbecue, Texas barbecue? That's a huge discussion there then. But American barbecue with perhaps the sauce and all of that. This is Mexican lamb barbecue. It's lamb instead of beef. So it's different. It's, it's not California burritos, it's not nachos and all of that. It's traditional Mexican fare. And the blog, if you take a look at the blog, is in service to educate um, about the dishes served here. Here's an article about halal dishes being served here. Here's an article about, okay, what's moronga? Here's an article about catering, chapulines. Here's our visit to the Taste LA food event. All of these are examples of um, of, of articles that could help that could help you get found. Let me show this example here. If I go over to if I go over to a search engine, Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever, and if I were to search, for example, what is wheat la coche? This is something that is served at the restaurant. Well, what is it? A fungus that grows on corn, considered a delicacy in Mexican, in Mexico, where cooks use it to flavor food. So it's a really interesting thing. It's basically a fungus that attacks corn and turns it into these fascinating shades of gray and blue, and it looks weird. But you put a little butter on it, you put it in a taco, and it's really good. Think of all of the terrible sounding things that other people eat, that people love all over the world. Mushrooms, ew, those yeah, grow in the ground. Well, this is a version of that. Now, notice the number one result in a Google search is the client, is our client, is the article that we wrote for the client. Then we've got Food Republic below it. Then we've got Reddit, one of the biggest, most popular websites in the world, third place. Wonderhowto.com, Wikipedia like the number two website in the world is in fifth place and this client's humble website is number one result in this search this is the most direct way to show you why blogging is important there is an article on our website that is that keyword that someone could search for if you go through the site you will see these various other articles on these various topics of what people could be searching for Does anyone know what Zagat is? Zagat is one of the big names in restaurant reviews. They've been around 40 years. They're like one of the big names. You don't get a Zagat review very easily. This client, because of their great food, has been Zagat rated. So if someone is searching for Zagat rated restaurants in San Diego, this restaurant, this client has a, has a, has a head start against all the others because it's hard to get a Zagat rating. Look at these celebrities that it may have that you may know that have come to the uh, to the restaurant. They opened in commerce in Los Angeles recently. They serve a beverage called pulque. What's pulque? Well, here's an article all about it. It's basically a fermented beverage from the maguey plant. The maguey plant looks a little familiar, like the agave plant. Does anyone know what agave graduates to? Tequila. Agave becomes tequila. The maguey plant. Uh, becomes pulque, a traditional Mexican alcoholic beverage. So the purpose to show you this client is to show you here's real examples of content um, to, to create, to get found um, when people are searching. So Blogging, in a nutshell, is used for creating content. The search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc., can find and show to people when they search. So you built an amazing website. You have great pictures. You spent a lot of money on it. You're not getting any traffic. You haven't engaged in SEO. You haven't updated it. 
And I'm not saying change your picture on your home page. I'm not saying change the about page. Those are not updates. Updates are basically blogging. We'll talk about how much should I write, when should I write, all of that stuff. It's in my handout. But in short, blogging is a way that keeps your site fresh because the search engines will care more about a site that is more current than a site that is older. Various factors, lots of factors in SEO. But if you notice, <coughs> May 2016, pretty new. November 2015, April 2015, pretty new stuff. This is not, these are not articles that, were, that have been here for five or ten years. These are pretty new articles. This one is not dated, but via other factors have caused it to be number one as well. SEO, as I said earlier, it's the art and the science and the magic of getting rankings. Because you may do every single tip and you still don't quite crack the, the, the number one spot. Maybe you're number three or five, which is still really good. The first page is really good. If you're on page two, it's not as good. If you're on page three, it's not as good. As you keep going further, people might not find you. So you can browse TextCoco, you can see there's articles, you can see, you read an article and then there will be share. There will be the ability for this article to be shared, to be sent to more people. That's advertising as well. This is that someone came to read that article, they liked it, and then they shared it to their Facebook. Their friends now can see this article. More people will see this article. That's part of a modern website as well. Um, make social sharing a priority on your site. Let other people be free marketers for you, free advertisers for you. You never know. Someone that visits your site may have a hundred followers and then they shared your article, you just got free visibility from a hundred people. Maybe one of those people that followed that person, maybe they have 2,000 followers, and that person really liked that picture or that in that article of yours, and they shared it to their 2,000 people. You reached 2,100 people, possibly. So we're going to take our first break in just a moment. Any general questions at this point? Okay, uh, it's 10.43. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 10.53. Um, we'll, we'll look at more of this blogging. I'm going to turn the printer back on if you'd like to print the handout, and then we'll, we'll get started again at 10.53.